Welcome to today's episode of hopefully how to check and adjust and tune my stand and rigging. This is my force day. There's no adjustment here on the actual force day itself. The back stay, well that's got what you call a bottle screw on it. The bottle screw is a means of adjusting the tension on the rigging. By varying its length, it's that simple. The rear stay here is fixed to the deck with a chain plate. This is a chain plate. The other common method is a U-bolt, which is just a bent bit of bar which bolts underneath the deck. This is the rear lower stay. This is the forward lower stay. They both go up to where about the cross trees are and meet. They hold the centre section of the mast. This one, which is right on the outside, which goes all the way up to the end of the spreader and then up to the top of the mast, well, that's a cap stay. If you put your eyeball on the mast and look up it, you can see if it's straight. Well, mine leans a little aft after the spreaders. Well, there's another way to look at your mast as well. Next, look up the mainsail slug track. Mine shows me that just after the spreaders, the mast leans to port a little. But not a lot in either way. Next, draw yourself a boat plan. These are my spreaders for the lowers, these port lowers, port lower aft. This is my cap and, the, and my starboard cap and my fore stay and my aft stay. And this is my gauge which I'm going to use to measure the load which is actually on the rigging. First, you need to decide how big your stays are, how fat the wire is. And there's a little measure on the side of this, so I just slide it along until I find the one that fits. And it's six millimetres. Seven's too big. You can use other ways of measuring your rigging wires. An easy one's a, an adjustable spanner with increments written on the side of it, or a vernier caliper, and so on. But once you've decided what size rigging wire you've actually got, you need to make the tool work for you. And at the top of it, there's a little adjustable wheel. And in the window, it gives you numbers of what size rigging wire it's going to measure. So obviously, you'd set this one at six, wouldn't you? Putting it on the wires is easy. You just make sure that the wire deflects on the pins. There's three connection points. Twirl it round. Make sure you've got the correct number in the top and go down. And you read for the dots. You give the tool a gentle squeeze together. And you read what the dot actually says. The last full dot. Well, there, it's number two is the last full dot. Two and a half has just been sliced a bit and three is definitely sliced. And normally it wants to be up by six. So this is actually quite a slack rear stay. If I put pressure on with my hand, you can actually see that 10% is at six, 15% is at seven and a half and so on. Well, cruising boats, I think, run at about 10%. Then go to your diagram and put it down on your diagram. Then do the same with all the other shrouds. And when you're finished, you're hoping for a much better pattern than I've got. If things are looking good, pairs should look quite similar in measurements. For example, the uh, cap shroud should be the same. Now these are 9.5 and 9, which isn't too bad, but the rest? The forward lowers are miles out from each other. And the rears are no better either. God only knows what this does to your mast when it's under load, let alone the chain plates. I expect all these to match each other in pairs when finished, and I'm hoping that they'll all be round the figure six. Right, going to have to deal with these bottle screws now. So the split pins in the back one, well, that's the only one. The rest of them have got grub screws in. The grub screw ones, I just wind them in until the grub screw goes into the threaded part of the bottle screw, and then you pull the little cap off, which keeps it locked in place. So if you've got these, you just wind them in until they stop and then pull the cap off, and they're ready to be worked on. The only reason the rear stay has got split pins in is the grub screws have been taken out at some point and lost. Not by me, but by somebody. So it doesn't really matter whether you've got lock and nuts on your bottle screws, or split pins in your bottle screws on lock and nuts, or just split pins. You need to go around the whole boat and free them all up so you can start work on them. If you have the type of bottle screw that has a nut at the top and the bottom to lock it, hold the bottle screw firm while undoing the top nut, then the bottom nut, and when putting back together in the reverse order, hold the bottom screw firm while locking up the bottom nut, then the top nut. 
Next, you want to give them all a shot of uh, WD-40 or anything similar to that. Put a, a cloth or something behind when you spray so as not to spray all over the deck of the boat. And do the top and bottom. Go around the whole boat like this. If you think on a day before the actual job and give them all a spray the day before, that helps a hell of a lot more. It gives you plenty of time to penetrate. In order to turn the rig and screw, you need to lock the wire off at the fitting with a spanner or a pair of pliers so it doesn't rotate. And then just rotate the rig and screw. The bottom's held, the top's held, the screw should turn in the gap in the middle. Work out which way's up and which way's down and then start slacking it off. A little don't in this area is the spanner's fine when it's on a spanner section or where the flat is in the middle but you should never put her in the middle there and leave her there you find that these bits here the bridges or, or the joiners they can be easily broken by love putting a spanner into this area so the weakest section is obviously the center of that so stay away from the center of it and then start yourself a pattern and move around the old boat these are, this is a cap shroud, so I do my cap shrouds after doing my rear stay. So then the cap shrouds, get a bite on the wire, get your spanner on the middle, that's a bit stiff. But it'll break free, and it's obviously going to get easier because you're, you're unwinding it so the load's coming off it. If they're really stiff coming off, then wind it as much as you possibly can off, lubricate the thread, and then put it back on. If you have a bottle screw that's actually seized and won't move easily at all, then you're actually going to have to apply heat to it to get it moving. Now I've picked a day with the wind, as you can see from my little flag there, at the stern of the boat. And that's because I'm going to slacken off the rear stay as much as possible so I can loosen the fore stay. Well, the fore stay should be helped to be loose by the fact that I'll have the wind on the mast blowing it forward. Just look how quick I can undo this when I put my mind to it. Now, don't be fooled, I've speeded it up. As I slacken this rear stay, the fore stay becomes slack because they oppose each other. As you can see, my fore stay's got three holes it can go into, and as at the moment it's in the centre hole. Moving this position forwards and backwards can often make a big difference to weather helm or lee helm or introduce where the hell more hell well while everything's loose i plan on moving this forward one notch um, to try and see if it helps my sail problem so the four stay just at the bottom will move forward an inch increasing the angle well i'm fairly much ready to give it a go these stays are all nice and loose now the mast's nice and loose the rear stays nice and loose and it's just time to get brave and disconnect the four stay here unfortunately it's not quite as loose as i'd like it to be so i have a bottle screw underneath here which i can loosen to add a little bit more slack in the four stay but these arms that protrude out from here are locked inside the anchor locker in here which i'll need to undo them so this can tilt up and down freely well Hey presto, that's done. There's the nuts in there. Right, I've slackened the nuts off inside the locker and I've slackened the um, bottle screw off a little bit here. I've also dropped my anchor down a little bit to make a bit of clearance at the back of the um, clevis pin. And for a little bit of safety, I've put this little strop on here, around here, so that if I let go of the force day, it ain't going to disappear nowhere on me. The pulpit just here, I'm going to attach a line to the spinnaker halyard like a safety force stay. Because my mast has the luxury of four lowers, four and aft ones, and although they're still loose, they'll still hold the mast up regardless. I'm not forgetting I've positioned the boat with the wind aft, so it's blowing the mast forward, hopefully keeping the force stay slack. Next, it's straightening out the split pin. It's obviously all curled up so that it doesn't fall out and I've got to straighten the two little legs of the split pin up so that I can pull it back out of the hole of the clevis pin. 
I can't quite get at this pin properly for the second leg. So what I'm going to do to make it where I want it is grab the other end of it with a pair of pliers and, and rotate it. If you rotate the clevis pin to bring the um, curly part or the bent part of the split pin up to the top where you can actually work on it, that makes life a bit easier for you. Give it a yank and out comes the pin. Now if it's any good it can go back in. But if it's fallen to bits, then you need to replace it with a new one. This little lash in here I've just put on is just to take the strain, rather than me taking the strain, that's all. I put one finger on the back of the pin and have my hand on the other side ready to catch it should it come out. But it doesn't seem to want to move. It'll need a bit more effort, I think. Well, a little pair of mole grips are definitely stronger than my fingers and they're better than pliers because when the actual clevis pin comes out you don't drop it accidentally in the drink. Now it's still being a little bit stiff on the way out but it will come sooner or later. Okay, it's 50% out now so I'm ready to move this force day. I've got to pull the pin out and when it's out, I want to have a quick look at it and decide whether it's going back in, if it looks okay or not. Then I need to move the force stay forward a little bit and get it back in the next hole further up. And it all seems to be going to plan, which is quite amazing. Well, it's through. So all I really need to do now is take the grips off. Give it a little wiggle and make sure that pin's in as far as I can get it with my hands. I'm going to squeeze the bottom uh, rig and fork it together a little bit so that the hole in the clevis pin is a bit further out so it makes life easy to put the split pin back in, if that makes any sense. I use a pair of long nose pliers normally to put the split pin in. You can put a lot more pressure on a pair of pliers than you can your hand. And it can be quite sticky to get in, especially if it's a second hand one. Well, that's gone in easy enough. And the only thing left to do then is open up the split pin a little bit and get a bit of a curl in the end of it so that it's not going to be a hazard to any anchor warps that pass this point. Don't want any little sticky out bits sticking out. I try to make a little loop on the end of the split pin so that there's no sharp edges on the ends. And then once I've done one side, I use the pliers on the other end of the clevis pin to rotate it to a sensible place to be able to get at the other side to be able to do that. And then I do exactly the same. I grab the end of the split pin and I roll it round into a little circle. And when it becomes a little circle, I don't believe it's, well, there's minimum chance of it actually catching anything. Once that's done, I just need to remove my little lashing. And after I've taken my lashing off, then I need to remove my safety line that I put on so that I wouldn't lose my four stay should anything happen. Check out what my split pin looks like with the ends rounded over. Keeps everything very neat. Hopefully nothing will catch anything. Make sure these gaps are even if you can. I mean, they should really have washers in. Next job for me to do is wind this four stay back up as tight as I can do. I'll have to slack the nuts off a little bit if I can wind it further, but I want to wind that as tight as I can by hand to get this slack out of here. I have to wind it just by hand because there's no way of putting any mechanical devices on it. There's no spanner areas or holes in it to stick a screwdriver through. And I think it's to stop you using it as a rig and tightening device and just a holding device. Then all I've got to do is lock the top and bottom nuts up and then check for play everywhere. Make sure it's not swinging round still. Obviously it's not tensioned up yet because I'll be using the rear stay to do the tensioner. You can see I've still got a bit of a bow in the um, four stay. It's just the weight of the sail and the foil. Probably a little bit of load maybe on the sheets, but not much. So now what I've got to do is tighten that up on that. I'll use the backstay and I'll wind the backstay up to 10%. Next, what I need to do is make sure the mast is vertical to the beam of the boat. That's not forwards and backwards, it's left and right, port and starboard. Viewing the boat from the stern, the mast should be 90 degrees to the deck. 
To do this, I normally get the mainsail halyard and pull it down to either the port or starboard gunnel and then just measure the gap between the end of the halyard and the gunnel. Then swing the halyard to the other side and measure that gap. And then adjust the turn buckles until the halyards equal both sides and it's all square. Then I'll move on to set the cap shrouds to the tension that I want them to be at. But not before partially loading all the lowers so the mast can't be allowed to buckle at all. Now I've got four lowers so I'll bring them all on now evenly. Checking them with the gauge as I do so and making sure that they stay even all the time. The other thing I will be doing is looking up and down the mast track as I do it. Um, sideways on the mast and the track itself to ensure that the... Um, mask stays straight while I'm doing it it's easy to look up the track just get your eyeball on the track itself and look straight up it and you want it to be straight all the way please note though some sporty masks require pre-bend and some of them even require rake so check out what your statistics are before you start now that's all that's left for me to do is to go around these turnbuckles one by one and put the locking pins back in them or put the grub screws back in whatever the locking device is. First thing I do is holding the rig and wire as I line the buckles up to make life easy for myself. Even if it's split pins, you want them in the right direction. You want everything to be easy, not hard. I know I've only set my rig at 10% all round, but that normally fares quite well for me. You can put the uh, rear stay a little bit tighter and the... Um, Rear lowers a little bit tighter, say 15% for cruising as well. But for racing, you want things more like 20%, and certainly on fractional rigs around a 20% where you've got less wires. Then when everything's locked off, I've got a couple of bolts inside the uh, anchor locker, which are the very last things for me to lock up. Well, there's my neat split pin for not catching the warp, and as you can see, I've moved the four stay one notch further forward. Now, all the rig now, though, is a lot better shape than it was before I started. If you place a weight on the end of the main halyard here, the distance between the mast and the halyard here is the rake. If you pull the main halyard tight to the bottom of the mast, as in here, the gap that appears in any area in the middle there is pre-bend, and that's only normally on a fractional rig. All my wires now are set at 10%, which is number six on the gauge. 10% is 10% of the braking strain of each wire and 6 mil wire breaks at about 2 ton so that's 200 kilos on every wire which in turn is pulling the mass down by 1600 kilograms on top of the coach roof and that's why we need a compression post inside to stop things getting squashed Now for a few do's Do, if you can, use a tool and don't forget to record your data loads Lube the bottle screws before undoing them, 24 hours before ahead if you can. Load wires in pairs, one or two turns one side, one or two turns the other side. And keep checking you're not introducing a bend by looking up the mast. And now just for a couple of don'ts. Don't rotate any wires at all. If you do, you must slacken the bottle screw right off, let the wire feel free and find its own position, lock it up and start again. Don't force a seized bottle screw to turn. Don't forget to lock your rig and wires back up with split pins or nuts. And above all, don't let your mast fall down. Just need a test sail now. <laughs> 